Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Inok Gorongwana delivered his maiden mini-budget against the backdrop of improved tax collections and a statistical rebasing of the economy. Terence Creeman joins me to discuss whether this was enough to paper over the debt and deficit cracks. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What were some of the main highlights of the MTBPS? So I think while well, the golden thread of this year's uh, medium-term budget policy statement was all about continuity, even though we have a new finance ministry, minister, we see this continuity around fiscal consolidation. The message was clear that while superficially things look a bit better because of the rebasing and because of a tax windfall, mostly from the mining industry, things remain very tight on the fiscal front. And uh, there's a need to address these high debt levels, which are now sort of a debt stock of 4 trillion rand, and the rising uh, debt service repayments, which are now becoming the, well, are the fastest growing item on the budget and are now starting to surpass uh, health and policing, for instance, as largest budget items. So it's not really a sustainable position. There's a view that uh, we, the fiscal consolidation therefore has to be sustained because these superficial tailwinds are temporary. So there was a very big emphasis on saying that these have come mostly from sort of high uh, windfall taxes from the mining industry. We know that the commodity prices have been soaring post the pandemic as supply chains have recovered, uh, uh, well, not post the pandemic, as supply chains really recover from the lockdowns. Uh, and there's a lot of demand for these commodities. So we've seen these spike and a lot of South African mining companies have benefited, profits are high. Uh, Treasury is emphasizing that and the minister is emphasizing that this is a temporary phenomenon. It has afforded us the right to give some additional social relief uh, that we desperately needed, especially after the July uh, riots. And uh, that has been, so there's been about 50, 52 billion uh, additional um, finance injected into the economy that wasn't planned for in, in February, but that this can't necessarily be sustained or can't be baked in. We can't bake in these high commodity prices. Therefore, if uh, the, we, we will need to make uh, adjustments if we want to make any new expenditure or put any new expenditure into the system from February, we either have to find new revenue streams and we know it's very difficult to add to taxes at the moment, given that uh, the economy is still limping along and only just in recovery, although we are going to grow by about 5.1% this year, despite the, the drag that the July riots have caused. So there's, so there's all these elements, but really the golden thread is uh, holding the line, continuity from what was said, even though the picture is slightly better than it was back when Tito Mbaweni was delivering his February budget. There are some very intensive spending pressures ahead of the February budget. Yes, I think uh, on the expenditure side, we can see that there's a lot of uh, action going up to Treasury from many different departments and different uh, pressures from society, looking for more resources, whether it's higher education, whether it's the state-owned companies. Uh, these, these pressures are uh, sort of constant and uh, Treasury bats some away. But the one that's the largest pressure, I think, is this, uh, whether South Africa should sustain the 350 rand a month uh, social relief grant that was in, in initially implemented during the, the heavy COVID lockdowns. It was then withdrawn and then re-implemented after the July riots. And uh, it, has, it is a popular thing. It has, it's reached a lot of South Africans. And there's a feeling with high energy and fuel prices in the system, and that's a high part of the, the inflation driver at the moment, that, that poor South Africans, particularly in a context where unemployment has risen massively, uh, uh, need the support and need it to be sustained. In fact, there's even pressure to, be, to extend it. That would add uh, what, about 40 billion rand a year to South Africa's budget expenditure. It's not money that we've budgeted for, and it's not within the fiscal framework. So it's been extended to the end of March. And what the minister is saying about all these pressures, so there's that 40 billion plus a, about another 67 billion rands worth of pressures 
uh, coming from all over the place. He's uh, uh, saying, well, we have to stay within the fiscal framework. So if we want to choose to spend on those items, we'll have to find the money through reprioritization or new revenue sources. And as I mentioned, new revenue sources uh, are going to be tricky. The minister outlined his approach to state companies, which often turn to government for support. Yes, he's got this philosophy of tough love. It looks very similar to the approach that Minister Underwini took as well. But he's added a sort of a caveat that you know, some, uh, some of these state companies are more strategic than others. And therefore, if they're too big to fail or too important to fail, obviously government's going to have to step in. The ones that come to mind, well, obviously Eskom comes to mind. And then uh, if Transnet were to descend into some form of distress, it has escaped that up until now. And I imagine that would also fall in that category. We see the guarantees that have been extended to Denel. And uh, some of those were called on, and therefore an item had to be adjusted uh, in the expenditure line this year to give Danel uh, some money, uh, nearly 3 billion rand, to uh, basically as calling on a, a sort of a 5 billion rand guarantee that was extended last year. So no new money was uh, outlined in this budget or in this uh, medium term policy statement uh, for state owned companies other than the Danel call on the guarantee uh, and the, basically the minister saying we want tough love and we want it matched in some cases with fiscal uh, with uh, reforms policy reforms in the economy now we know that uh, in energy that really about, is about getting more private sector investment into the electricity sector and we know as well in rail it's about opening up the network to private operators maybe and on the ports as well and then we also have this big uh, log jam around spectrum release. So those are the sort of areas. So there will be state-owned company support where it's strategic and where it's earned uh, and deserved uh, and where it's too important or too big to fail. But it's, it's not a given and currently it's not factored in. What should we be looking out for in the February budget? I think the key issue here will be these expenditure pressures and how they translate over the next few months. So we know that this uh, basic income grant or the social relief grant issue is not going to go away. There's a lot of thought going into this and what society should do about this problem. So that's, uh, uh, that is not going to be easy uh, to, to bat away. Um, we also have to look at all the other expenditure line items, whether they're coming from uh, SOEs in terms of the form of uh, some form of support or calling on guarantees or from line departments or from other social needs in education or health. For instance, uh, the vaccine rollout, some money has been set aside for extending that. Uh, imagine at some point there might be a booster program that would have to be funded. So those sort of extended expenditure items are going to be a major uh, focus. And obviously, how long this uh, commodity upswing can, can last and can continue to help our companies make these large profits, that can obviously create some space. But I don't think, I think the message is we can't bake it in and we can't rely on it. But it has been a very important windfall at a very crucial moment for South Africa. So I think, uh, therefore, if, if they are going to put in these new expenditure requests or pressures, Either we're going to have to find, drop certain items, which is going to be difficult. It's always difficult to drop. I mean, we saw this year uh, having to add, for instance, we didn't, weren't expecting, for instance, to have to have this huge 11 billion for SASRIA to help with insurance claims off the riots. So we can't afford another sort of unhappy surprise like that. Uh, but if we, even if we don't have unhappy expenditure surprises, we need to either find revenue for it so if it's going to have a, a basic income grant, how are we going to pay for it? Uh, and that, when I talk about revenue, that really comes down to tax and what the tax instrument is. I think that uh, on the personal income tax, people feel very stretched at the moment. Um, and if the VAT rate were, were to be increased, while it's broader based, that's a regressive tax. So there'll be a lot of opposition to that. Companies, I think we, not, we, we have reduced our corporate taxes tax rates quite significantly, but we're sort of in the competitive areas and we are in a competitive world. 
around that. So that's also going to be difficult. So if we're not going to raise, raise revenue, uh, then the best would be to grow. And if we're not going to grow, we're going to have to reprioritize, it looks like. That's the message that's coming out. So it's going to be a tricky February budget. And really, that's where this sort of broad brush uh, moves from that sort of high level to the devil in the detail. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.